identical, at least they thought they were, but when they were diagnosed with the same genetic condition, no one could have predicted just how differently it would affect them. Yeah, while Adam became severely disfigured, Neil suffers with memory loss and epilepsy. So they're now the subject of a new BBC documentary which tries to discover why their lives have taken such different turns. Well, with us now is Adam Pearson. Uh, morning to you, Adam. Thanks very much morning. for joining us. Uh, this documentary, it, it is fascinating. What made you decide to do it? We wanted to get answers to something that, that we hadn't known about. As a, from a medical perspective, myself and, and Neil were an anomaly. No, no one knew what was going on or why it was going on. And so to reopen the book and ask the same questions 15 years later, uh, medicine moves so quickly, particularly in genetics, so it seemed like the right time to try and get these answers. Was it quite a hard journey to, to go on, though? Whenever you do something like this, you, you have no idea of what the news is going to be. I'm, I'm not I'm the most medically unqualified person um, in the building at the moment. And so there's always that thought in the back of your head, this might not end well for, for one of us. But I think that's the, the secret of a good documentary. You need to let yourself be vulnerable, ask the right questions. And if I can't buy into this emotionally, how is anyone else expected to? So you ask the questions, you brace yourself for the answers, and you, you take on the world. Um, the the tumours in your face have grown because the second gene, the repairs, am I right, there are yes. two genes, the repairs, and one of them, yeah. well, you explain it, but you, you, you understand so it better. So we have two pairs of both genes. Yeah. And in my case, the first pair was broken from the get-go. And then the second copy broke when I was in development in the womb. And that's how genetic conditions occur. But it didn't happen to Neil, uh, in, in, in his face at least, but, it, but his, his memory loss in his brain is caused by what? Um, we find that out at the end of the... Right, we don't want to give that away, so, but, no, but that's part to, of... No, need to save something. Yeah, save, save something. <laughs> but, but, but then, what you found out through the course of the programme, has that helped in any way? Yeah, absolutely. We've definitely got an answer to, to questions we had. Um, when you are, have a genetically identical twin who's affected by the same condition very differently, there's always a thought at the back of your head, is his memory loss in my imminent future and is my disagreement in his imminent future? And so to find out that that is not the case was a real relief. Uh, and and you, you do a fair bit of travelling in the documentary, including to the States, to look at treatment options. Is yeah. this something that you, you, you're going to consider? or? Yes, yeah, so there was a, there's a drum trial currently happening in, in Bethesda in Washington with a um, MEK inhibitor that has reduced the size of tumours in NF1 patients by 40%. So one of the side effects, potential side effects of that drug is retina detachment. Right. So something that could improve my vision could also make it worse. So it, it's a real... It's, so it's yeah, what, it's vision, hard, what vision do you have at the moment? Is it... Is so I'm blind in this I have been for years now, and I'm partially sighted okay. in the uh, right eye. But in, and in spite of that, and in spite of the disability you have with that, you, you lead an amazingly full life. I think it's really important that we all, all live the lives we have, as opposed to mourn the ones we don't. And I could moan about my condition and get angry, bitter, put really a head on a loop and hug the dog and cry, but that's not going to achieve anything, and it's really going to annoy the dog. <laughs> yeah, and, and, and such an inspiration for people as yeah. well. And, and, and one of the things we were talking about um, before you came on was, was just with dealing with people as well, because often, you know, if you're, if you're meeting uh, kids, if you're on a bus or whatever, and kids are looking at you and asking their parents questions, does that bother you? Or um, do you no, not... I think asking questions is, is the most healthy way to deal, yeah. deal with anything, because it makes it known. And sometimes the parents react really negatively and that makes things like disagreement even more um, alien than, than they yeah. already are. You see small children going, a bird, yes, the sky, yes, the dog, my child's a genius, what's wrong with that man's face? And all of a sudden the mood changes. Yeah. And it, it's okay to ask questions, it's completely okay. Yeah. It's how we learn. I'm really looking forward to seeing the documentary, it sounds extraordinary. Adam, thanks very much for coming on this morning. No problem at all. Yeah, and say hello to Neil from us as well. well uh, that is yeah, on uh, BBC Two tonight at nine o'clock, Horizon, my amazing twin.